think AI is going to make most jobs worth less than they already currently are. Mm -hmm. If you're a newspaper writer or whatever, AI is taking AI that. is going to take that in the next 10 years. Yep. And you're going to, if you still have a job, it's going to be only managing the AI, which means you're going to be paid even less than you're currently paid. I think life is about to become exceptionally difficult for the people in the middle. I think the good times are old, over. I think it's going to go back to the feudal system of kings and serfs and peasants. And I think if you're a normal average person now, you should feel deep fear and panic. If you look around on YouTube, no one is showing themselves working anymore. Everyone is out there enjoying life, traveling and having fun. The reality is that the opportunities for traditional work are disappearing. With AI on the rise, the middle class is facing a crisis. And the question we need to ask is, is AI the end of the middle class? Recently, the International Monetary Fund published an interesting study that dives into how generative AI could impact our economy and what we can do to make sure its benefits are shared more equally. First off, the study talks about wealth inequality. One big concern is that generative AI could make rich companies even richer. These large firms have the money and resources to invest heavily in AI, which could lead to a winner-takes-all situation where a few companies dominate the market and rake in massive profits. This concentration of wealth can widen the gap between the rich and the poor, which is already a significant issue today. In an interview, the godfather of AI, Jeffrey Hinton, also spoke about this. It's not certain, but it's fairly clear that these big language models will cause a big increase in productivity. So there's someone I know who answers letters of complaint for a health service. Yeah. And he used to write these letters himself, and now he just gets ChatGPT to write the letters, and it takes one-fifth of the amount of time to answer a complaint. So he can do five times as much work, and so there are five times fewer of him. Um, or maybe they'll just answer a lot more letters. But or they'll answer more letters, right? Or maybe they'll have more people because they'll be so efficient, right? More productivity leads to more getting more done. I mean, this is, Maybe not, this is an unanswered question. But what we expect in the kind of society we live in is that if you get a big increase in productivity like that, the wealth isn't going to go to um, the people who are doing the work or the people who get unemployed. It's going to go to making the rich richer and the poor poorer. And that's very bad for society. Definitionally, or you think there's some feature of AI that will lead to that? No, it's not to do with AI. It's just what happens when you get an increase in productivity, particularly in a society that doesn't have strong unions. Well, if you want to watch the full video, click on the I button. This IMF study also highlights how AI might disrupt the job market. While AI can make companies more productive, it might also replace many routine and manual jobs particularly those held by low-wage workers. These workers could find it hard to get new jobs that pay as well, pushing more people into poverty. So, while AI boosts overall productivity, the gains might not trickle down to everyone, especially those who need it the most. To address these challenges, the IMF suggests several strategies. One key recommendation is to revamp education and training systems. As AI continues to evolve, Workers need to learn new skills that are relevant in an AI-driven economy. This means governments and companies should invest in upskilling and reskilling programs to help people transition to new roles. It also talks about the importance of flexible and adaptive policy frameworks. Governments need to be agile in their approach, creating policies that can keep up with the rapid changes brought by AI. Social protection systems like unemployment benefits and retraining programs should be strengthened to support workers who lose their jobs due to AI. When it comes to taxation, the IMF suggests that current corporate tax systems might need a rethink. Instead of giving tax breaks that encourage automation and job displacement, tax incentives should promote investments that enhance human labor. Additionally, since AI data centers consume a lot of energy, taxing their carbon emissions could help address environmental concerns. In the U.S., the number of manufacturing jobs peaked in 1979 
and has been declining ever since. However, manufacturing output has increased, with the US producing more goods than any country except China. Machines are not just replacing humans on the assembly line, they are doing a better job. And this is happening even before AI starts disrupting many other parts of the economy. I am less concerned with Terminator scenarios, MIT economist Andrew McAfee said on the first day at Asilomar. If current trends continue, people are going to rise up well before the machines do. McAfee highlighted new data showing a sharp decline in middle-class job creation since the 1980s. Most new jobs are either very low-paying or very high-paying. This is not only occurring in US, but worldwide, especially in EU. He suggested that these trends could be reversed with better education and more emphasis on entrepreneurship and research, as economies have adapted to new technologies in the past. But after his talk, many researchers at Asilomar warned him that the coming AI revolution would eliminate far more jobs far more quickly than he anticipated. The rise of driverless cars and trucks is just the beginning. New AI techniques are set to transform everything from manufacturing to healthcare to Wall Street. This means it's not just blue collar jobs at risk. Several top experts in this field told me, I think you're underestimating the rate of change, McAfee said. This threat has led some to consider the idea of a universal basic income, UBI, a guaranteed living wage provided by the government to anyone out of work. However, it is believed this could worsen the problem by removing the incentive for entrepreneurship and other activities that create new jobs. Others worry about the psychological impacts of UBI. A universal basic income doesn't give people dignity or protect them from boredom and vice, Etzioni says. Researchers were also concerned about AI regulation. Some fear that after restricting immigration, which could hinder the entrepreneurship McAfee advocates for, the White House might try to limit automation and AI. This would be bad for AI researchers and the economy. If AI progress slows in the US, it might accelerate elsewhere increasing global competition and putting American jobs at even greater risk. No one left Asilomar with a clear solution to prevent economic upheaval. Anyone making confident predictions about the future of artificial intelligence is either kidding you or kidding themselves, McAfee says. Still, these researchers are determined to find answers. People work through the concerns in different ways, but I haven't met an AI researcher who doesn't care Etzioni says, people are mindful. However, they agree that stopping AI's progress is neither the solution nor really possible, like trying to bring back those old manufacturing jobs. Well, what do you think? Share your thoughts and check out these videos on your screen for more interesting AI-related content.